so what else is new? Uh, with the new digital technology that's out there, you now have networkable probes where you can get an unlimited number of uh, sensors on one network. It all is dependent not so much on the humidity manufacturer, but the, uh, the type of system that you have, how many PC, uh, uh, how much memory in your PC, how many links on your network. Uh, with the Ethernet, you can now monitor uh, over the uh, World Wide Web. You can plug in and halfway around the world, uh, monitor what your clean room is doing, uh, make sure everything is going okay. You can send out alarms and digital um, texts uh, to your handheld devices or PCs or via email to see if there is a problem. Um, all the reporting is there for electronic record, records and electronic signatures that the FDA requires. And now there's the data loggers with uh, battery backup or system failures, uh, which would do all your uh, psychometric uh, values that you need. And you can bring in outside um, third-party instruments, and not just humidity and temperature, but uh, into the data loggers and into the network systems that would now also fall under the FDA uh, software validation. So basically what you want to do is say you want to follow the manufacturer's instructions. You want to remember all the external factors we talk about, most importantly being temperature. But you want to be aware of your uh, humidity values, your temperature values, what contaminants are there. Uh, do you have airflow in your washdown procedures? Uh, how do you want to protect the sensor? Do you want to remove the sensor before washdown? Do you want to cover it with a, a protective cap or filter? Do you want to just uh, have it in your procedure that to this air, this transmitter will be avoided. Uh, all your powering and power and wiring outputs that, that you need. All you need to display. All these things you need to be thinking about. How do you ensure a proper calibration on these devices? Uh, basically, the hardest part about any type of calibration is calibrating against a known reference. How do you know your reference is good? If your reference is no, no good, then your calibration is going to be no good. Uh, you have to be sure that you're calibrating against a known standard. Basically, a calibration is the act of adjusting your instrument to match that standard. What is the calibration interval? And that's something we'll talk about uh, in a little bit on the, uh, the coming slides. Uh, and then a working standard is basically an instrument used as a standard to compare with the instrument to be calibrated, such as a handheld. Some of the best practices for humidity calibration. Uh, as we, uh, I, I probably beat you to death on this one already, is you want to make sure that your temperature is stable. Relative humidity is a function of temperature. Um, airflow is preferred for the best results uh, because you're going to get faster response on both temperature and humidity. Uh, a lot of customers do what they call single point calibrations, but that's not truly a calibration. Uh, a single point reference adjustment is okay if your only critical point for example, is 50% RH, you don't care about any other value, then it might be okay to do a, a single point uh, calibration or, again, not a calibration, but adjustment. Basically, what you're doing is adjusting the whole curve. Uh, so at 50%, you're accurate, but you may no longer be accurate at the high ends or low ends. You definitely want to try, for a better calibration, uh, two to three points minimum. Uh, it's a good idea to calibrate from the lowest values to the highest values to eliminate any hysteresis effects that might come into play. And then, as I mentioned, the calibration frequency, uh, we always get asked as a manufacturer, how often do I need to calibrate? But there's a lot of factors that go into this. Uh, some of them we touched on already. Is, uh, one of them is uh, how, mu how much contaminants are in the, uh, in the application. How tight of a tolerance are you trying to maintain? Uh, generally, um, a very good relative humidity sensor um, will drift less than 1% per year. Even sitting on the shelf, not being used, all sensors have drift. So if your tolerance is uh, 1 or 2% RH accuracy, then you're going to want to calibrate every six months to a year. But if your specification or tolerance is, uh, say, 4 or 5%, you can maybe push that out a little bit longer to 18 months, even two years. So really, calibration frequency is something that's determined by the customer. Um, and also you want to be aware of those external factors that we touched on. They could affect your frequency interval as well. So how do you calibrate in the field? Uh, well, uh, definitely a very easy way to do it would just to be to 
have a calibrated probe swap. You take the probe from your uh, stock that's been freshly calibrated, uh, pop it on, pop the old one off of your transmitter, and put the new one on, and there's no further adjustment necessary. Uh, you can do again on rare occasions a one-point adjustment with a handheld unit. Uh, that's not a true calibration, but that gives you uh, a little bit better accuracy at your critical points. There's what's called salt solutions that are available. Uh, different manufacturers provide different versions. Uh, there's ones that are uh, saturated salts, which you might have to prepare for yourself. Uh, different salts generate different humidities in an enclosed environment. Um, there are other salts out there that are unsaturated. Uh, some of them are prepared for you to make it easy uh, so that you don't introduce any contamination or anything that could uh, throw off the value. They're good, they're inexpensive, uh, they're, they can be accurate if used properly, but they take time. Um, and then there's calibration chambers. There's a whole plethora of choices out there for calibration chambers, and they range, can range anywhere in price from uh, as little as uh, roughly $12,000 all the way up to $50,000, depending on what you're trying to do. You want to be uh, very sure of uh, the, what you're getting. Uh, there's divided flow. Uh, types that are out there. There's two pressure, two temperature systems that are out there. Uh, if possible, I would ask the manufacturer for a stability analysis. Basically, that will give you the information on the inside chamber, how stable it is. Uh, they've tested every inch of that chamber, and you know roughly what you're getting for accuracy throughout the entire chamber, your speeds of response and whatnot. You know, it's cheaper, as they say, isn't always better. And the last on this slide here is uh, loop calibrations. I touched on this uh, previously. You may be, have all the confidence in, in the world that your sensor is now fully calibrated and accurate, but what about your dig digital signal or your analog signal going back to your uh, DCS uh, data acquisition system or your chart recorder? With the digital technology now available, uh, these uh, fixed simulators can be uh, can be certified and as a, used as a handy tool to be used after you calibrate your probe. You use a fixed simulator to uh, simulate a signal of humidity and temperature throughout your entire loop. And that way you can be confident that if you have a 50% RH simulator, that at your digital screen or at your chart recorder, you better be recording 50% or else there's something else wrong along the way. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Bill, and he's going to touch on uh, record keeping. So one of the initial slides that talked about best practices included the, the term keep records. So keep records is pretty straightforward. There's still a, uh, a number of people that still use paper chart recorders, as you see on the picture on the right-hand side. And that's their record, if you will, to prove to the FDA during an audit that the humidity and temperature were within tolerance. Uh, of course, there's a lot of paperless recorders out there now. And building management systems, BCSs, PLCs, et cetera. And of course, in those cases, you need to have the 21 CFR Part 11. And the data must be stored in an encrypted format, so it cannot be changed and shown to the FDA that it does meet the requirements of electronic signature. And here's an example of calibration records, uh, which I'm sure many of you go through, uh, whether it's every six months or every year. You need to keep track of, uh, as Greg suggested, a two or three point calibration at different, uh, at different levels. And also keep track of the test equipment that's used, which must be NIST traceable, and typically two to three times more accurate than the actual instrument that's installed. It's also important, to, or a very handy tool uh, for spot checking would be a handheld device. Handhelds are excellent tools. Uh, again, you can bring them to your uh, transmitter, um, and what you want to do is make sure your handheld has a very recent calibration on it. It can be used as your uh, calibration check or a validation standard. Uh, bring it to the sensor. Uh, don't just stand there for a few seconds and walk away, though, however, so you want to make sure you leave it next to your transmitter and uh, let it equilibrate uh, and let you can determine if uh, your transmitter is measuring correctly by looking at your handheld value. Some handhelds often provide uh, ability to do digital calibrations, not only one-point adjustments, but if you're able to uh, generate humidities, such as with salt solutions, 
these handhelds can be used to do a full calibration on the transmitter itself. So it's a very good tool for um, uh, clean room monitoring and validation checking of your other humidity devices. 